In this video, I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know about sharing your screen in a Microsoft Teams meeting. Hey, it's Dougie Wood, and welcome back to this video all about how you share your screen in Microsoft Teams meetings. Now, there's a number of reasons why you might wanna share your screen during a Teams meeting. It might be that you want to walk through showing someone a particular website or how to use an app or something like that. It might be that you want to give a presentation, a PowerPoint, for example, and sort of walking people through a slide deck. It might be that you've got a particular problem and you're needing help and you want someone to help um, by sort of sharing your screen and showing someone a problem or maybe someone else has got a problem they're trying to show you. Whatever it is, the ability to share your screen using Microsoft Teams is a really important feature. So let's start off by looking at how do we share our screen. Now, across the top of your Teams uh, meeting, you'll see we've got this um, kind of features bar, these buttons essentially we can select. And across the far right, we have the share button. Now be careful because I have seen quite a lot of people in the past before when they go to click the share button, accidentally click the leave button, um, and then there's nothing funnier than someone saying, oh, I'm about to share my screen, and then boom, they disconnect from the Teams meeting. So just make sure you do actually click that share button. Now, when you click that share button, you're gonna see there's a few different things which appear um, as options. It's gonna show you um, the different screens you have available. Now, I actually have two screens that I'm using. Um, I have my kind of, the, the what you can see here is the, the Teams meeting on one screen, and then I have a, sort of my desktop screen on the other side. Now, um, before we select what option we want, you will also see that there's this option here called presenter mode, which is basically where we can choose whether we just share the content only, so it's just what we're gonna share the screen, or we can use what they call the standout option. Now, I'm not gonna be able to demonstrate this in this video very well, because you have to be on the other side of the meeting to really see this, this working. But essentially what standout means is it will actually cut out, imagine my kind of silhouette here, um, it'll cut me out, and this is a terrible, <laughs> I'm doing this in reverse, it'll cut me out like this, my shape, and it'll pin me into the bottom right hand corner of what I'm displaying. So you can actually still see me moving around uh, whilst actually still presenting that content. Or we've got side by side, which is gonna put my webcam next to the content that I'm displaying, or uh, as a reporter, again, that's kind of more of like a popped out kind of version of the content. We also have the ability to add a background, which is essentially just framing our content. Um, there's a few different stock options that we can choose from here, uh, which is sometimes a bit better than just having kind of like a, a black kind of template that's around it. Now, the next option is we can choose a window. Now, a window is essentially all the different tabs that you have open across the bottom of your um, desktop computer. Now, by selecting that, you can see I've got loads of different things, I've got loads of draft um, sample Word documents and things like that, um, different tabs and, and things like that open in my browser. And you can choose to select just one of those if you wanted just to show purely just um, the Word document, for example. Now, there's benefits to that. The reason why you would do that is, um, say for example, you want to present a Word document to people, present that and walk people through it, um, and you weren't planning on showing anything else on your screen, then that's quite a good way of doing it because the, the number one reason why people do that actually is because they're worried that something might pop up on screen that they didn't want to show. So if you're presenting to a customer and maybe there's some other information that you don't really want to quite show them, um, that maybe something's not quite finished yet or something like that, or um, maybe you're worried that there's gonna be a pop-up message that's gonna come up from Teams or WhatsApp or something like that with a message that isn't too savory from a friend. Um, you can basically mitigate all of those risks by only sharing a window because only sharing what's in that window means that you won't have any pop-up messages or anything else that you don't want to appear. It's only gonna be what's in that window. The downside of that, and I've seen this happen more times than, than I have seen messages pop up, is that the downside is that then conversations can move on from what you're showing, and then you might wanna be showing something else, and then people forget that they've only selected that one window, and they start talking through something else. And I've seen it in the past before, people waste minutes of time talking about something that they thought was on their screen that they were showing to somebody, 
that they weren't and then everyone ends up really confused and going oh hang on you're you're not sharing that you're not showing us what you're talking about you end up using losing minutes of the meeting and overall it just doesn't give a very professional slick feeling you can lose a lot of trust and authority during what you're presenting by making those types of mistakes so i to be honest don't necessarily use that option all the time just for that kind of reason because usually when i'm presenting to people i'm showing multiple things i'm showing pdfs i'm showing powerpoints i'm showing examples i'm showing websites i'm showing all sorts of stuff all in one presentation i want to be able to quickly move around so usually i do select the kind of share screen option um so to do that all i need to do is click on which screen i want so i'm going to select this screen and you can then see um, i'm actually now um, showing you um, the microsoft sharepoint web page and i could be talking you through clicking through to different areas and things like that and essentially i'm just sharing my screen this is an example but this is what i would quite often do during a meeting now you might be able to see this you might not depending on the recording because i can now see my recording tabs so this is again a bit like inception where it's kind of a meeting within a meeting but um then once i am happy with what i've shared and i want to stop sharing and click on that stop sharing button and that'll bring me back into uh my team's meeting and i've just realized all of that was on the wrong screen <laughs> um but basically this is a perfect example this is sort of like well, i say i'll talk people through sharing my screen show them like a website like this um and, and yeah you got the kind of gist of it essentially that that's how you could um share your screen so once as i say you finish sharing your screen there'll be a little pop-up box across the top that will say stop sharing you'd click on that and that would stop sharing now the other options that you've got when sharing a screen is you can also use a Microsoft whiteboard, which is basically where um, you can draw on things together and, and almost like simulate like you're in a meeting room in real life and drawing on a whiteboard together. You can use that whiteboard feature to do that. You could share content from your camera. So if you've got camera, uh, sort of basically that's a camera app on your computer. So any pictures, things like that. Um, and then we have... Um, a couple of options down here uh, different live options so we have what we call PowerPoint live and we also have what we call Excel live now these two options basically means we can select a file and it will present it uh, in live mode which is basically a much better way of um, getting engagement from people because it embeds it into the team's meeting so rather than sharing your screen and then having to sort of cycle through uh, PowerPoint um, in a kind of in a non-native way to Teams, SharePoint, uh, sorry, PowerPoint Live will actually have better features. So I've created a little <laughs> example um, why you should be fearful of Honey Badger's PowerPoint just for this um, demonstration. But by selecting the PowerPoint, it will then put me into PowerPoint Live where you can see my webcam now is over here and the actual presentation is then shared to everybody here. And the experience for Excel is basically the same to be honest, it embeds it um, in this kind of view. Now, the reason why I like this is because rather than having when we, we use share our screen and sharing a whole screen and then having PowerPoint on, on one side um, and having um, uh, our Teams meeting on the other, this is all embedded into one. So I can see my notes nice and easily here and I can choose increase or decrease those. I can choose um, to sort of move through the slides like so. Um, I could choose if I wanted to, to use a laser pen to point at particular areas of whatever it is that I'm um, discussing at that point in time. I could also use a pen. So if I wanted to kind of um, draw little symbols or things like that, or if I wanted to um, actually color something in. So as I was talking about something and saying, a oh, circle, a honey badger element of this. And of course I can use this eraser to uh, rub anything out that I didn't want to be in the presentation as well. But it's a much better experience, I find. Um, you can actually um, change to, say, uh, magnify the slides for everybody, view slides in high contrast. And the other cool thing is you can also choose to translate the slides. Now, people can do this themselves as well. So if you're presenting to people and it's a multilingual audience, they could choose to change um, the, the slides if they wanted to into a different language. So you can see it's automatically translated it into French um, as an example. So I think this is a fantastic way if you're going to share your screen and you're going to be sharing a presentation 
I would use the PowerPoint Live options. And the same goes for Excel as well. If you're going to be sort of demonstrating an Excel document, I would use um, the, the, um, the, the Excel Live options to do that. And again, once you're happy um, with this and you just want to remove it, you can choose to click on that Stop uh, Presenting button, click on Stop Presenting, and that will then remove um, that from the screen and it stops sharing it for everybody. So I hope you found that video about sharing your screen in Microsoft Teams meetings really useful. If you did, please do subscribe to my channel for more Microsoft top tips. Like the video and drop a comment um, or a question in the feed below. If you need any professional help with Microsoft Teams, there's a link in my bio and there's also a link in the description below. So get in touch if you need any help um, deploying or adopting Microsoft Teams. Thank you.